Okay, so the last two free response questions on this AP review. So this is number five. And first of all, hopefully you guys remember that if you have an observational study, you do not have cause and effect. The only way to have cause and effect is to have an experiment, which means you included random assignment. So you can say something like, because this is an observational study and not an experiment, uh, causal conclusions are not appropriate for this study. So if you don't have cause and effect, then there could be confounding variables. For example, maybe the group that exercises also eats healthier, and it's really the healthy diet that leads to lower cholesterol. So just a reminder that correlation does not imply causation. All right, part B. So now we need to make it an experiment, which means you need to explain some random assignment or be talking about how you're randomly assigning uh, patients to groups. So recruit a group of patients, randomly assign the selected patients to two groups, instruct group one to specific exercises regularly, and instruct group two not to do any regular exercise. After one year, measure the cholesterol levels and compare. And to avoid confounding factors, you could include to make sure that none of the patients are on cholesterol reducing medicine or diet. Um, and if you also wanted to include blocking, you could. You could block on age or gender or race or genetic factors that can also contribute to high cholesterol. All right, so question number six is usually the hardest one. Um, they tell you to give yourself about 30 minutes. So you do have three hours total for the test, uh, 90 minutes for multiple choice, and 90 minutes for the free response. And of that 90 minutes, a third of it should be for question six. I actually thought this question six was fairly easy compared to some of the ones I've seen. Usually it's a little more outside of the box thinking. So hopefully you guys did okay. Uh, so on your box and whisker plots, they will count you off if you don't title which is which. You also need a number line actually numbered, and you also need a title. Be really careful on any graphs that you guys make, um, and be sure that you have titles on any graphs, okay? Um, your work matters on all the free response questions. So then we're just going to do socks. Uh, so anytime they ask you to compare distributions, be sure you include something about shape, outlier centers, and spread, unless there's no outliers. So first of all, they said the di distribution of prices are both roughly symmetric. I suppose you could say this one is like slightly skewed right if you wanted to. Uh, then you compare the medians. So the median for Sunshine Estates is lower than the median for Pinewood Estates. And then for your spread, I just talked about the range or in general, both the IQR and the range. Uh, ha, this one has a much larger spread, whether you talk about IQR or range. Um, so Pinewood Estates has a larger spread than Sunshine Estates. Okay, now we're doing a confidence interval. There are two sets of data. So we wish to estimate the true mean difference, mu1 minus mu2, with 95% confidence. And you have to say which is mu1 and which is mu2. So mu1, I decided would be the true mean selling price in Sunshine Estates. And mu2 is the true mean selling price in Pinewood Estates. All right, the name of the test is a two-sample t-interval for mu1 minus mu2. And then they're both random samples, so we have to check our conditions. They're both random samples. Uh, you got to check 10% for both, so we'll assume there are at least 140 houses in the Sunshine Estates subdivision and at least 150 houses in the Pinewood Estates subdivision. All right, um, part B actually already told us to assume normality. Um, so somewhere in there it already said to assume normality. All right, and then this is the only formula given to you for a confidence interval, you guys. So the statistic plus or minus critical value times standard deviation of the statistic. Um, in this case, our statistic is subtracting our x bars. So be sure you subtract in the same order that you did mu1 minus mu2. Uh, and again, this information comes from just right here, our mean. So I'm doing Sunshine Estates minus Pinewood Estates. 
Okay, plus or minus, T star is difficult to find. We don't really know degrees of freedom, which is why we run the test first and then state the degrees of freedom. And we don't really need to find T star, just put T star. All right, again, T's go with means. All right, then this formula is on your yellow sheet right here. We don't know sigma, so we use the standard deviation from the sample. So these two right here. And our sample sizes go in the denominator of that formula. <clears throat> So it looks like that. Okay, we're going to run the test on our calculator. So you actually want to go to your calculator, go to menu, go to statistics, go to confidence intervals. The first four are all for means, and these two are for proportions. So I have a T interval and a two sample T interval. Again, the Z's are when you know the population standard deviation, which we do not. So I'm going to do the two sample T interval. And this time we're going to plug in the statistics given to us. So X bar 1 is 113.357. And the standard deviation for Sunshine Estates is 3.296. And N is 14. Okay, the other one is 124.333 for your mean. Standard deviation, 14.181, and your N. Okay, confidence level, change it to whatever it asks for. It said 95%, and don't ever change pool. Just leave it, and we're good to go here. So here's my answer. There's my confidence interval. And the other thing that you have to write down is the degrees of freedom. All right, so be sure you write down your degrees of freedom. And then we conclude, we are 95% confident that the interval from, notice I changed it to thousands, so 2,976 to 18,976. If you didn't change it to thousands, you need to write in parentheses in thousands. Um, captures the true difference in mean house prices between Sunshine and Pinewood Estates with Pinewood being more expensive. So I just explained what order I subtracted in by saying that Pinewood was more expensive instead of using the negatives. Okay, so they're allowed to spend 120,000 on their new house. What percent of houses are within their budget? So the main thing here is making sure you make this 120. Either that or you need to make both of these in the thousands, okay? So we are assuming normality, so I can go from negative a big number to 120, mean of 113.357, standard deviation of 3.296, these come from the Sunshine Estates data, and they can afford about 97.8% of the homes. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for Pinewood Estates. Uh, only make sure you use Pinewood Estates, Mean, and Standard Deviation, and they can only afford 38% of homes in Pinewood Estates, so they're more likely to find a home they can afford in Sunshine Estates. So this one has a couple ways that you could answer the question. So one way is to look at the shapes of the graph. So the box plot has no outliers, the distributions are roughly symmetric. Um, another thing that's interesting is the medians are close to the mean. So if you look back at the data, here's the mean, here's the median. Those are really close. Here's the mean, here's the median. Those are fairly close. All right. Um, so that indicates symmetry. Uh, therefore, the prices are most likely fairly normally distributed. So that's one way to argue. Okay, another thing you could do is actually calculate the mins and the maxes. You could get a z-score for the mins and the maxes. So the min for Sunshine Estates was 107, and you do the data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And the max is 119, so same thing, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And we get numbers close to negative 2 and positive 2. Do the same thing for Pinewood, and we get numbers close to negative 2 and positive 2. What should the mins and the maxes be close to as far as a z-score goes? They should be close to three standard deviations above and below the mean. So this actually indicates the prices may not be normally distributed. So you can argue that one either way. It's up to you.